So we are, we are starting the book Ika Gai today. Yeah. Uh, we'll actually start with uh, the first chapter. Just one second, let me. Okay. Okay, so Shivangla, you're on now. You can roll. So we'll start with the prologue and then we will uh, go ahead. So it's Ikagai, the Japanese secret of long and happy life. Uh, ikigai. Yeah, Ikigai. Yeah. Kavita, please say it again. Ikigai. Ikigai. Ikigai, a mysterious word. This book first came into being on a rainy night in Tokyo when its authors sat down together for the first time in one of the city's tiny bars. We had read each other's work but had never met, thanks to the thousands of miles that separate Barcelona from this capital of Japan. Then a mutual acquaintance put us in touch, launching a friendship that led to this project and seems destined to last a lifetime. The next time we got together, a year later, we strolled through a park in downtown Tokyo and ended up talking about trends in Western psychology, specifically logotherapy, which helps people find their purpose in life. We remarked that Viktor Frankl's logotherapy had gone out of fashion among practicing therapists who favored other schools of psychology Though people still searching for meaning in what they do and how they live, we ask ourselves things like... So, one second. So, logotherapy will come to, he'll explain it later. I have not been through it, but he'll explain it later in the book. What is the meaning of my life? Is the point just to live longer or should I seek a higher purpose? Why do some people know what they want and have a passion for life? while others languish in confusion. So these are all these deep questions, okay, that we are also asking when we are going into these expanded states. Who am I? What am I here for? What is my purpose of life? What do I need to achieve here? Where am I going? So these are deep questions. Uh, uh, for people who've done the excursion workshop and the gateway voyage, we have the five questions, the exercise, which is pre pretty profound and some people get really good answers in that. Is the point just to live longer or should I seek a higher purpose? Why do some people know what they want and have a passion for life while others languish in confusion? At some point in our conversation, the mysterious word Ikigai came up. The Japanese concept, this Japanese concept, which translates roughly as the happiness of always being busy is like logotherapy but it goes a step beyond. It also seems to be one way of explaining the extraordinary longevity of Japanese, especially on the island of Okinawa, where there are 24.55 people over the age of 100 for every 100,000 inhabitants, far more than the global average. So again, the happiness of always being busy. So the point here is that you are busy, but you are happy being busy. Most of the time we are in the doing mode. So when we are doing something, you will get tired. You will not be happy most of the time. But when you are happy doing something, then it is happening. Okay. So again, it's shifting to the flow. Basically, it's again a shift to the flow to the right side of the grid. Those who study why the inhabitants of this island in the south of Japan live longer than people anywhere else in the world believe that one of the keys, in addition to a healthful diet, a simple life in the outdoors, green tea, and the subtropical climate, its average temperature is like that of Hawaii, is the ikigai that shapes their lives. So again, what is the key to living a long life? In my view, if you're operating from the right side of the grid, you're happy doing what you're doing, you're allowing things to happen, automatically you have found your ikigai at the end of the day. 
we'll we'll be looking at more what ikigai actually means as we go ahead but then basically that's it allowing the flow into your life while researching this concept we discovered that not a single book in the fields of psychology or personal development is dedicated to bringing this philosophy to the west is ikigai the reason there are more centena centenarians in okinawa than anywhere else how does it inspire people to stay active until the very end what is the secret to a long and happy life so again ikigai is the secret for you to not retire to continue doing whatever you are doing <coughs> because at the end of the day ikigai is what you are it's your state of being so you can't help doing what is your being and that's when when happiness comes in when all the good stuff in life starts to come as we explored the matter further we discovered that one place in particular ojimi a rural town on the north end of the island with a population of 3000 boasts the highest life expectancy in the world a fact that has earned its nickname the village village of longevity Okinawa is where most of Japan's shikuwasa, a lime-like fruit that packs an extraordinary antioxidant punch, comes from. Could that be Ojimi's secret to long life, or is it the purity of the water used to brew its moringa tea? So again, anything. See, alkalizing your diet is an extremely important part of healing. So again, this fruit. alkalizes your diet so if you have it then it alkalizes your diet as we explored the matter further we discovered that one place okinawa is where most of japan shikuwasa i went to sorry we decided to go to study the secrets of the japanese centena centenarians in person after year of preliminary research we arrived in the village where residents speak an ancient dialect and practice an animist religion that features long-haired forest sprites called bunugaya which are cameras and recording devices in hand as soon as we arrived we could sense the incredible friendliness of its residents who laughed and joked incessantly amid lush green hills fed by crystalline waters so anyone who's on the right side of the grid will always be friendly will always be giving will always be open to experiences will always you know want to help out so automatically they become friendly as we conducted our interviews with the eldest residents of the town we realized that something far more powerful than just these natural resources was at work an uncommon joy flows from its inhabitants and guides them through the long and pleasurable journey of their lives so again over here uh, i don't know how many of you all have seen the movie the last samurai uh, in that I, what was his name the actor he uh, tom cruise he gets captured and he gets taken to the uh, village in japan and what he observes over there he makes a statement i don't remember the exact word but it's something like this that i found that they are dedicated to the task that they set out to do and they practice it through the day they start at sunrise and they practice it without getting tired throughout the day and they have they they are in tune with nature and they care for nature totally so everyone in that village has found that ikigai what is uh, ikigai sorry what what is their tone what is their musical note and then they just continuously play that okay so again as you do that life becomes pleasurable and you they live longer again the mysterious ikigai but what is it exactly how do you get it it never ceases to surprise us that this haven of nearly eternal life was located precisely in okinawa where 200000 innocent lives were lost at the end of world war 
Rather than harbor animosity towards outsiders, however, Okinawans live by the principle of Icharriba Chore, a local expression that means treat everyone like a brother, even if you've never met them before. So again, naturally, they're on the right side of the grid, okay? So they are open to everyone. In spite of having their entire space destroyed in World War II, they hold no grudge. If they were holding grudges, where would they be? They would be on the left side of the grid. And then you cannot find your ikigai when you are on the left side of the grid. It turns out that one of the secrets to happiness of Ojimi's residents is feeling like part of a community. From an early age, they practice yui maru or teamwork, and so are used to helping one another. So again, community, a sense of kinship is extremely important. If you can pick up the phone and call people to help you and support you, that creates a lot of security. It creates a lot of peace within. Okay, so that's why community becomes important. What we are doing here, satsang, what it's called satsang in, uh, in other cultures, you'll find that community bonding is extremely important. So in these, in these villages, the community really bonds with each other. It's the same thing as what uh, Robert Holbrook was telling us, that the entire village in that South American village was in operating in Focus 12. So everyone was out to help each other. There was total community bonding. The children just grew up, okay? And entire village was responsible for everything. So if you can have that kind of a state of consciousness in your environment, automatically growth, longevity, relaxation, because stress is not in the system. You have someone to protect you. This was also the game in the joint family system in India before selfishness and politicalization of the entire process started taking place. You used to have a community. I know that my parents, they were, I think, 13 or 14 children. They didn't even have to step out of the house to play with anyone because they were totally integrated. There were enough people within that community to support and look after them. Okay, this was one of the very, very important parts of uh, longevity and happiness is a feeling of community. Nurturing friendships, eating light, getting enough rest and doing regular moderate exercise are all part of the equation of good health, but at the heart of the joy de vivre that inspires these centenarians to keep celebrating birthdays and cherishing each new day is their ikigai. So again, moderate exercise, this gymming and you know, this hard exercise <coughs> is actually not required. We are not meant for that. We were hunter-gatherers. So we used to move slowly. So there are some other studies done also in, uh, in various studies that just gentle movement is enough. You don't need to do that high, high fast cardio to keep your health going. In fact, at times it can work negatively also for you. The purpose of this book is to bring the secrets of Japan centenarians to you and give you tools to find your own Ikigai. Because those who discover their Ikigai have everything they need for a long and joyful journey through life. Happy so one, travels. Yeah. So once you connect with your Ikigai, then your journey becomes beautiful. It becomes joyful. It becomes happy. Hector Garcia and Francesc Miralds. Chapter 1, Ikigai, The Art of Staying Young While Growing Old. What is your reason for being? According to the Japanese, everyone has an Ikigai, what a French philosopher might call a raison d'etre. Some people have found their Ikigai while others are still looking, though they carry it within them. Our Ikigai is hidden deep inside each of us and finding it requires a patient search. According to those born in Okinawa, the island with the most centenarians in the world, 
Our ikigai is the reason we get up in the morning. Okay, just one second. Now there's some noise coming. So what are the four most important things? First, you have to figure out what do you love. So I guess I would suggest everyone take out a pad and a pencil and start making a small note as to what do you really love in your life. Let's give it a few minutes. What do you really love? Just make a note of that. Nikki, there are different times, different things you love. That's all right. But what do you love? What's the core of what you love? So when I say what you love is, some, is something that you come back to all the time. And of course, you've, you've transformed, right? So at this point in time, what do you love? Dad. Whatever you do, don't retire. Having a clearly defined Ikigai brings satisfaction, happiness and meaning to our lives. The purpose of this book is to help you find yours and to share insights from Japanese philosophy on the lasting health of body, mind and spirit. So again, whatever you do, don't retire. So if you are, if you are doing your Ikigai, if you are doing what you are passionate about, if it is your profession, then you just don't need to retire. You can keep doing that till the end, till the last day of your life. You can keep doing that once you find that purpose. Okay. One surprising thing you notice living in Japan is how active people remain after they retire. In fact, many Japanese people never really retire. They keep doing what they love for as long as the health allows. There is in fact no word in Japanese that means retire in the sense of leaving the workforce for good as in English. According to Dr. Dan Butner, a National Geographic reporter who knows the country well, having a purpose in life is so important in Japanese culture that our idea of retirement simply doesn't exist there. So if you love what you do, where is the question of retiring? You'll do it till the end of your days. It just, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to retire. It's as simple as that. The island of almost eternal youth. Certain longevity studies suggest that a strong sense of community and a clearly defined ikigai are just as important as the famously healthful Japanese diet, perhaps even more so. Recent medical studies of centenarians from Okinawa and other so-called blue zones, the geographic regions where people live longest, provide a number of interesting facts about these extraordinary human beings. So a strong sense of community and a clearly defined Ikigai are the most important part of living a long and healthy life apart from diet and other stuff. Not only do they live much longer than the rest of the world's population, they also suffer from fewer chronic illnesses such as cancer and heart disease. Inflammatory disorders are also less common. Many of these centenarians enjoy enviable levels of vitality and health that would be unthinkable for people of advanced age elsewhere. Their blood tests reveal fewer free radicals which are responsible for cellular aging. As a result of drinking tea and eating until their stomachs are only 80% full. Women experience more moderate symptoms during menopause and both men and women maintain higher levels of sexual hormones until much later in life. The rate of dementia is well below the global average. So again, they are always on the right side of the grid. If you are on the right side of the grid, then illness will automatically be less. You are less stressed out. It's as simple as that. Okay, you'll be more vital, you'll be more energetic, automatically. Uh, free radicals, this is very, very uh, funny. We have a uh, dark field microscope 
in the center over here and we take these uh, blood samples before and after the uh, uh, the workshops that we do and free radicals are basically red blood cells they get like porcupine stuff on the red blood cells that means this red blood cell has itself got damaged so when when there is a free radical attack on the red blood cells they are incapable of transporting nutrients and oxygen etc there was one very funny case there was this one young uh, young person and he started fainting so his mother actually uh, somehow the other we got talking so i said okay bring him we'll test his blood when we tested his blood his blood was fully of those pokey 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 blood blood cells that means there was a free radical issue in his thing and i had had an experience when we had gone to buy the hho machine in japan the guy who was selling it to us he was wanting us to test our blood on the microscope to see before and after taking uh, this hydrogen gas whether it is helping us to clear our blood or not and what we found was that our blood did clear after taking uh, hydrogen many of you here have had that experience but again tenacity in india is a problem so you know people don't use it too much but then i told the guy who was selling it to us why you better test your blood also when he tested his blood we found that there was a lot of free radical red blood cells in his blood so and he what what happened actually was that he was having he was having a drink and i said okay maybe this drink is creating the problem so i took out the lecker antenna i'm testing his access his access was totally out when he left the drink his access came back a little and i said this drink is not good for you you better change it and it was a protein shake many of these people who want to do muscle building etc they are having these protein shakes so i told him bring the bottle when he bought the bottle it, there was aspartame in it now people who are having diet coke etc you better note this because that aspartame was which was causing the problem and then the next we were there for about 7 days this guy the next day he went and bought another protein uh, mixture which did not have aspartame so it didn't taste as well as good but after 3 days again we tested his blood and his blood had cleared up so this free radical thing is something that we really need to look at because it actually can cause fatigue and all sorts of things we have a full chart over here which shows a different kinds of free radical when the blood cells come out in different ways what happens so this free radical becomes very very important and it is a sign of aging also he says over here eating until their stomachs are only 80% full so one of the things is you will find that japanese eat in small plates they don't eat in big helpings like uh, the westerners so the the less quantity you eat the better your system works and the better your digestion also works okay and of course if you are healthy then all other symptoms of your life uh, become better and then dementia also if you are on the right side of the grid you are aware you are focused you are in equanimity then automatically dementia also will not touch you okay so these are very very important points here the characters behind ikigai in japanese ikigai is written as life combining which means life which to be worth by can be broken down into the characters which mean armor number 1 and to be the first to head into battle taking initiative as a leader and which means beautiful or elegant though we will consider each of these findings over the course of the book research clearly indicates that the okinawans focus on ikigai gives a sense of purpose to each and every day and plays an important role in their health and longevity okay what is also interesting is in that in the japanese language there is no word for retirement so there is no necessity for retiring you can be active to the last day of your life the five blue zones Okinawa holds first place among the world's blue zones. In Okinawa, women in particular live longer and have fewer diseases than anywhere else in the world. The five regions identified and analyzed by Dan Buettner in his book, The Blue Zones, are Okinawa, Japan, especially the northern part of the island, 
The locals eat a diet rich in vegetables and tofu, typically served on small plates. In addition to their philosophy of ikigai, the Muay or close-knit group of friends plays an important role in their longevity. Sardinia, Italy, specifically the provinces of Neuro and Ogliastra. Locals on this island consume plenty of vegetables and one or two glasses of wine per day. As in Okinawa, the cohesive nature of this community is another factor directly related to longevity. So again, you see diet and also community. Community is a very, very important part of being healthy and living longer. Loma Linda, California. Researchers studied a group of Seventh-day Adventists who are among the longest living people in the United States. The Nicoya Peninsula, Costa Rica. Locals remain remarkably active after 90. Many of the region's older residents have no problem getting up at 5.30 in the morning to work in the fields. Okay, so now slow movement. When you are doing gardening or when you are doing work in the fields, there is slow movement. There is no hurried movement. Okay, very slowly you are moving, you are planting or you are weeding. Okay, or you are uh, trimming. So there is very slow movement. It's just movement but very, very slow movement. Ikaria, Greece, one of every three inhabitants of this island near the coast of Turkey, is over 90 years old, compared to less than 1% of the population of the United States, a fact that has earned it the nickname the Island of Long Life. The local secret seems to be a lifestyle that dates back to 500 BC. So if you see the old age things that have been working, they actually work. I used to see my grandfather, he was 94 and he was hale and hearty till, till literally the very end. And he used to tell me, you know, you are a, when he was 80s, 80s, uh, 82, 82. When he was 82 he, and I was 28, he used to tell me I'm a young man of 82 and you're an old man of 28. So he literally did everything himself. He used to eat well, he used to eat everything. He never stopped eating anything. He used to have a set routine. He used to really walk around very slow movement, no robust ex uh, exercises, etc. He was in touch with a lot of people. He used to call up at least around 10 or 15 people every day and speak to them. He had a lot of community. He used to uh, used to mix around with all the staff. He used to mix around. He used to go into anyone's house and he used to talk to them. So he really had a lovely and a long life. He had found his ikigai, technically speaking. And people still remember, remember him, even though he's passed away, I think some 15 years back, but they still remember him till date. Why? Because he actually felt that he, he, he was living that Ikigai. Okay, so that's what they're talking about over here. In the following chapters, we will examine several factors that seem to be the key to longevity and are found across the blue zones paying special attention to Okinawa and its so-called village of longevity. First, however, it is worth pointing out that three of these regions are islands where resources can be scarce and communities have to help one another. For many, helping others might be an ikigai strong enough to keep them alive. So again, being, uh, being holistic, okay, not being selfish is a very important part of holistic living. So again, over here, helping others in an island, you have to help each other out. So that makes for that kind of a thing. Now in an island, if everyone is fighting with each other, at the end of the day, no one will be alive only because there are lack of resources, there are less resources. So you have to support each other. But that doesn't okay. mean that you can only do it in an island. We can do it here also. According to scientists who have studied the five blue zones, the keys to longevity are diet, exercise, finding a purpose in life and ikigai, and forming social t strong social ties, that is having a broad circle of friends and good family relations. So great. So diet, exercise, purpose in life and strong social ties. These are the four things. So if you see the five aspects of what we talked about, except for the work life they've not put over here, but basically the five aspects, if you can bring them together, everything starts to work well. 
Members of these communities manage their time well in order to reduce stress, consume little meat or processed foods, and drink alcohol in moderation. So stress reduction, big important factor. Managing your stress is so important because every disease, every issue that you have originates from stress. So stress, stress leads to dis-ease. The dis-ease leads to disease and the disease leads to the uh, uh, pain. To the pain or to the symptom. Okay. Now, for example, I keep using this example. I have a pain in my hip. Now, if I go to a doctor, what will the doctor do? He'll give me a painkiller to handle the pain. But is he taking care of the stress? He is not taking care of the stress. So what is the actual stress? I carry a purse in my, in my back pocket, which is a thick purse. Now that is making me sit lopsided. So it is creating a stress in my hip area, which is causing me a disease. But because I want to keep my purse in my back pocket, I don't pay attention to it. And then the disease is that it can cause a degeneration in my hip pocket. And then I get a symptom, which is the pain. So in allopathy, mostly they're dealing with the symptom. They're not dealing with the actual stress. But what are we dealing with here? We are dealing with wanting to remove the stress itself. If you de-stress the body, if you remove the stress which is there, and stress can be mental, emotional, physical, or psychic. It can be either way. So for example, in one case, I'll just share it with you. Shimangla had a pain in the leg for some time. Okay. And she was sleeping with a leg outside the bed. And again, it has to come. So you know the information, but you don't uh, use it. And then I tested in the house. There was one picture which was posted outside our flat. And I got a negative reaction from that. And as soon as we removed that and put it in another place, the pain in her leg disappeared. So that picture was causing a stress in her leg, which was causing her the pain. Now, she had gone to lots of doctors, lots of people, done massage, this, that, but it wasn't getting handled. So, again, stress becomes very important part. Again, consuming less meat. Meat is uh, acidic in nature. So, you need to alkalize your diet because most of the stuff that we are eating because of metabolism creates acid in our system. It, it increases, I mean, reduces the pH value. And then processed food, the same thing. It is acidic. Alcohol in moderation is good because it helps the system. But it is not necessary in my view. But in moderation, it is good. If you consume too much alcohol, again, it becomes acid creating. We read, read about this. We did the ultimate pH solution in one of our book readings. That's also a very nice book that we can read at some point in time. Members of these communities manage their time well in order to reduce stress consume little meat or processed foods and drink alcohol in moderation. They don't do strenuous exercise, but they do every day. They do move every day, taking walks and working in their vegetable gardens. People in the blue zones would rather walk than drive. Gardening, which Im involves daily low intensity movement is a practice almost all of them have in common. So again, low intensity movement not the hard cardio that people are professing nowadays. You'll find that people are doing a lot of cardio. When they stop doing it, the body totally gets flabby. But if you're doing slow movement, okay, then the problem is not there because your body is used to that particular slow movement and you can do that till the end of your days. Okay, you don't have to have that really powerful cardio kind of exercise. The 80% secret. One of the most common sayings in Japan is Hara Hachi Bu, which is repeated before or after eating and means something like fill your belly to 80%. Ancient wisdom advises against eating until we are full. This is why Okinawans stop eating when they feel their stomach reaches 80% of their capacity. Rather than overeating and wearing down their bodies with long digestive processes, that accelerate cellular oxidation. So if you overeat, it's a problem for your body. Okay, because the body does not need, need that food. And if you're overeating, then it has to process it and then store it. 
so that also takes up energy so it's better to eat in moderation than to overeat every and each time of course there is no way to know objectively if your stomach is at 80% capacity the lesson to learn from this saying is that we should stop eating when we are starting to feel full the extra side dish the snack we eat when we know in our hearts we don't really need it the apple pie after lunch all these will give us pleasure in the short term but not having them will make us happier in the long term so this is something that you have to control your desires you know the taste you have to control your tongue basically the way food is served is also important by presenting their meals on many small plates plates the japanese tend to eat less a typical meal in a restaurant in japan is served in five plates on a tray four of them very small and the main dish slightly bigger having five plates in front of you makes it seem like you're going to eat a lot but what happens most of the time is that you end up feeling slightly hungry this is one of the reasons why westerners in japan typically lose weight and stay trim okay so if you're there was this one story this guy actually they say that you chew your food 35 times or 32, 32. times before swallowing it 36 32 whatever 32 yeah so what this guy did he actually made holes in his plates and he used to carry his plate every time he went anywhere to eat so he had to eat within that space which was in the center part and he could not spread his food more than that and he carried his plate even if he went to a party he carried his plate so what happens what happened happened then was that his automatically his meals became smaller and then he could start chewing it better the way food is sorry recent studies by nutritionists reveal that okinawans consume a daily average of 1800 to 1900 calories compared to 2200 to 3300 in the united states and have a body mass index between 18 and 22 compared to 26 or 27 in the united states the okinawan diet is rich in tofu sweet potatoes fish three times per week and vegetables roughly 11 ounces per day in the chapter dedicated to nutrition we will see which healthy antioxidant rich foods are included in this 80% so again sweet potatoes are alkalizing okay so sweet potato is a good thing to have of course fish if you are having and vegetables is of course alkalizing most of them moai connected for life it is customary in okinawa to form close bonds within local communities a moai is an informal group of people with common interests who look out for one another for many serving the community becomes part of their ikigai so again creating strong bonds being able to pick up the phone and speak to people having people on call you know that okay this person will support me it's a big thing maybe you'll never call that person for support but if you know that person will support you it's a big thing because it reduces your stress levels and it allows that feeling of security the feeling secure is a very very important part of creating happiness within and joy within the moi has its origins in hard times and farmers would get together to share best practices and help one another cope with meager harvests members of a moi make a set monthly contribution to the group this payment allows them to participate in meetings dinners games of go and shogi japanese chess or whatever hobby they have in common the funds collected by the group are used for activities but if there is money left over one member decided on a rotating basis receives a set amount from the surplus in this way being part of a moi helps maintain emotional and financial stability if a member of a moi is of in financial trouble he or she can get an advance from the group's savings while the details of each moi's account practices vary according to the group and its economic means 
The feeling of belonging and support gives the individual a sense of security and helps increase life expectancy. So your kitty parties, okay, it has come from here. But kitty parties is a twist. Over here, it's actually meant to support people. It's not meant for just fun and games. Following this brief introduction to the topics covered in this book, we will look at a few causes of premature aging in modern life and then explore different factors related to Ikigai. Okay. You want to stop here or you want to continue? You ask me. Should we stop here or you want, you want to continue? No, no, no. Continue. Continue, here, please. Continue. Continue. Okay, continue. Chapter 2. Anti-aging secrets. Little things that add up to a long and happy life. Aging's escape velocity. For more than a century, we've managed to add an average of 0 0.3 years to our life expectancy every year. But what would happen if we had the technology to add a year of life expectancy every year? In theory, we would achieve biological immortality having reached aging's escape velocity. Have you all got this? We are slowly adding a little bit every year. But if we could add, we aged one year and we, we add one year to our life expectancy, then technically speaking, we could live forever because we've aged one year and we've added one year to our life expectancy in the same year. So we could live till the end of time. Aging, escape velocity and the rabbit. Imagine a sign far off in the future with a number on it that represents the age of your death. Every year that you live, you advance closer to the sign. When you reach the sign, you die. Now imagine a rabbit holding the sign and walking to the future. Every year that you live, the rabbit is half a year as far away. After a while, you will reach the rabbit and die. But what if the rabbit could walk at a pace of one year for every year of your life? You would never be able to catch the rabbit and therefore you would never die. The speed at which the rabbit walks to the future is our technology. The more we advance technology and knowledge of our bodies, the faster we can make the rabbit walk. Aging's escape velocity is the moment at which the rabbit walks at a pace of one year per year or faster and we become immortal. Okay, so that's very clear. Researchers with an eye to the future, such as Ray Kurzweil and the Aubrey de Grey, claim that we reach this escape velocity in a matter of decades. Other scientists are less, less optimistic, predicting that we'll reach a limit, a maximum age we won't be able to surpass no matter how much technology we have. For example, some biologists assert that our cells stop regenerating after about 120 years. Okay, so when what also happens is in the DNA, there is something called telomeres at the edge of the DNA. And the number of times the cell will split up is dependent on that size of the telomere. Now, when we are stressed out, the telomeres shorten quicker. And when we are less in stress, they keep, they, 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 uh, I mean, the number of times they can regenerate increases. Okay. So this, what they are saying is that 120 years, that is a limit which is put because of the telomere size. But if you have technology which can increase the telomere size, then the DNA can keep splitting. They can keep splitting and new cells can keep getting generated. Active mind, youthful body. There is much wisdom in the classic saying, men sana in corporo sano, a sound mind is a sound body. It reminds us that both mind and body are important and that the health of one is connected to that of the other. It has been shown that maintaining an active, adaptable mind is one of the key factors in staying young. So again, as we age, the more new things that we do, 
keeps the mind active. So one of the questions that we ask in our workshops is, when was the last time you did something new? Okay. And let me tell you, 90% of the time, 95% of the people are blank faces. They've not done anything new in their life or they don't remember when they did something new. So if unless you do something new, new neural pathways and neural growth does not take place in your brain. So the brain starts, the cells start to die. The growth of the brain is not there. The dendrites are not expanding. New synaptic connections are not being made in the brain. So one of the ways to keep active is to do new things. So it says adaptable mind is one key factor in staying young. So the more new things you do, the better your mind will be. So always pick up something new, cook something new, do something new. Try to, you know, go into some kind of an activity which is new. All the time, do something new. Get a new idea. Work on a new idea. Becomes extremely important. Taste a new food. See the flavor. Do a new exercise. Whatever. Do something new all the time. Having a youthful mind also drives you towards a healthy lifestyle that will slow the aging process. Just as a lack of physical exercise has negative effects on our bodies and mood, a lack of mental exercise is bad for us because it causes our neurons and neural connections to deteriorate and as a result, reduces our ability to react to our surroundings. So now what happens? The more neural connections we have, the more information we have, the more modalities we have to be able to deal with a particular situation allows us to handle our situation much better. There's one story over here which talks about muscle memory also. That Sevag, I think it was, I think it was Sevag, this uh, it was shared by a friend, that when he used to always get caught out whenever the ball used to come in the offside. He had only one shot to play with that. And a slip used to be placed there and he used to get caught in the slip all the time. Because he had only one way of hitting that shot. So in the nets, he was told to practice 10 different ways. I'm just putting a figure there to hit that particular shot. And the more he practiced with doing hitting the shot in the new way, and then ultimately he stopped getting out because of that offside ball. Okay. So now if we have new ways of doing stuff, new ways to handle things, new ways to act in a particular given situation, automatically I become happier, more resilient within myself. So naturally there will be less stress in my life because I'll have multiple ways of dealing with the same thing. So as a result, reduces our ability to react to our in, uh, yeah, surroundings. to our surroundings. Okay, so it this increases it. Over here, because of lack of activity, it is reducing it. With activity, you actually increase your ability to deal with the situation. This is why it's so important to give your brain a workout. One pioneer in advocating for mental exercise is this Israeli neuroscientist Shlomo Breznitz, who argues that the brain needs a lot of stimulation in order to stay in shape. As he stated in an interview with Edward Punsett for the Spanish television program reads, there is a tension between what is good for someone and what they want to do. This is because people, especially older people, like to do things as they've always done them. The problem is that when the brain develops in brain habits, it doesn't need to think anymore. Things get done quickly and efficiently on automatic pilot, often in a very advantageous way. This creates a tendency to stick to routines and the only way of breaking these is to confront the brain with new information. So again, if you're keeping on doing the same thing, you're going into a pattern round and round, round and round, you keep going in the pattern. Now there is no new stimulus. So then everything becomes boring. You get that? So you need to add the tadka into the dal to make it more tasty, right? So you need to do new things. You need to, uh, I mean, you need to put new stuff into the brain to make it active, okay? Presented with this new information, the brain creates new connections and is revitalized. This is why it is so important to expose yourself to change, even if stepping outside your comfort zone means feeling a bit of anxiety. So all growth, 
takes place from moving from the known to the unknown we saw this in magical child when we read magical child together the child moves from the known matrix which is the mother into the unknown into the physical matrix and then comes back to the mother with that new information and as as the child grows up it keep that no unknown starts becoming the known so the daira the distance that the child can travel from the mother starts to increase so again we have to step out of the known into the unknown to to you know to it creates a little anxiety but if i have the foundation of the known then that anxiety can be handled abhay uh, that means routines are not a good thing no routines are a good thing because they they harbor efficiency they make okay. you efficient but if okay. you are not stimulating yourself with new things all the time then that routine can become mundane you understand okay. it can yeah. create a lack of enthusiasm in your whole life oh. okay so routines are a good thing they're not bad they're efficient but you need to do new things all the time thank you the effects of mental training have been scientifically demonstrated i think we need to stop it's 317 let's stop here with uh, this okay. and then we'll continue tomorrow anyone anything to say on this i only want to add one thing yes uh, when talking about doing new things mm. i was always used to going when when i was drive when i used to drive to a particular place i would always take the chosen path matlab whatever the path was even if we, if it was longer yeah i was too scared to try a new path yeah so uh, i think uh, when i think a few year a few months ago when i was driving to a particular place i said okay let me try a new path yeah i think tension road there are lots of new roads that have come up yeah so i said okay let me try a new path and i found it so liberating I just yeah. found a way to go, and you know, it just broke my pattern. Exactly. So I just want to give that yeah, example. Yeah, so it's absolute perfect example. Like today, if you're traveling from one point to the other, if you have multiple ways to go there, now if one one road is jammed, one road is broken down, then you have multiple ways of going going to that place, and we need to keep experimenting with this. This was seen in mouse mice also, when they put a mice in the in the cage. and this mouse found different ways of how to access the food and then once they did that they started exp experimenting with other routes they automatically started doing it and then that automatically reduced the stress in the mouse because they knew they could access that food from different roads and different varieties so we are the same right if i can get from one place to the other and i have multiple ways of doing it automatically i become less stressed out so that's very very important keep keep feeding our brain with new stimulus yeah yeah okay anyone else anything yes yes is anmuk yeah nikhil ji yes yeah uh, this is ganesh yes ji um uh, i agree with uh, the entire story you know and even i experienced the same thing when i was working in the company yeah um, we used to even going from my department to the canteen you know yeah. there used to be a straight road uh which would take about 2 3 minutes yeah but always uh, we used to take uh, different routes mm -hmm. going to the canteen and coming back to the uh, department yeah uh, just it used to uh, give us a fresh outlook to what are the new things around appreciate the greenery the trees the flowers and you know it's it's going away from the uh, mundane routine activity uh, of designing by being into nature just Correct. for the art moment you know yeah. it uses the creativity absolutely yeah. so even even if you're walking on the shop floor you can yeah. walk in different ways because okay. it give you different perspectives about what is happening in the factory for the, for that matter yeah. exactly that is how you know we used to uh, take part in the in the suggestion uh, schemes you know yeah <laughs> different suggestions also. absolutely yeah. absolutely thank you meridosa please unmute yourself hello yeah sir thank you for uh, that uh, four questions you asked now what i love most uh, yes and what i'm good at uh, 
Yes. I exit four, four question. Then you summarized one nice way. I not able to fully understand mission, profession, vocation, like that you mentioned. I want to yeah, know so the. Yeah. So in the middle, things. in the middle, if you see uh, that if uh, what if you go back to that chart. Now Shivangla has taken it uh, away. But what you love yes, doing yes. and what the yes. world needs is your mission. Uh, yeah, what okay. the world needs is your mission. What you uh, love uh, and what you are good at is your passion. Uh, what you are good you... at and what you can be paid for is your profession. Uh, and what uh, you can uh, be paid for and what the world needs is your vocation. I've put it on screen. Yeah, take a screenshot of this. I will send it in the that, group also. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I want the distinction. Yeah. This very fine distinction, which was first time I'm listening. It's nice. Yes. Thank you so much. But we send you. it by the group and uh, get it. Thank you, I, sir. I will. Uh, are you on the you uh, on book the... reading group? No. Are I you on the virtual sir. group? Uh, for, yes, yes. First time I'm attending. So. Okay. I uh, just send me a message. My number is nine eight three hundred. Nine.